Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. Um, today I got an awesome guest on our show, uh, Jeremy Knopf. Uh, I've gotten to know Jeremy a little bit. Um, I met Jeremy, what was it, maybe about a month ago? And yeah, something like that. Met Jeremy at a, at a mastermind in, in Tampa. And um, Jeremy runs Spartan Media, but you know, what I, the little that I know about Jeremy and um, his background and what he's gone through, I don't think there's probably anybody better to have on this podcast um, in regards to beyond all boundaries. And, but no, seriously, right? Like the journey and the things that we go through to get to where we are. And I just think that you have an amazing story. I'm um, number one, you're a Marine, right? So thank you for your service. Um, My pleasure. We really, really appreciate that. And um, man, welcome. So thanks for being here. Thank you, man. It's my pleasure. So do you want to let our listeners just, you know, give a little background of yourself and who you are and, and we'll just dig in. Yeah. So um, I'll kind of give you the, uh, the Cliff Notes version and we can dig into whatever area you think would be most useful for your audience. But um, I served in the Marine Corps, got out, kind of worked my way into digital marketing at a time when we were still early enough into the internet that everyone thought that it was going to be just a fad. Clearly that hasn't played out the way that those people thought. Um, but from there, I, you know, I ran a successful agency for several years. And then a few years ago, I had a health crisis that almost killed me, um, okay. destroyed my business, destroyed my finances, pretty much destroyed everything. And from there, I kind of had to reset from less than zero, right? Because obviously trying to stay alive, racked up a lot of debt. And, uh, you know, from there, I kind of, uh, developed this process that I used that helped me kind of jumpstart and get back to where I needed to be. And, uh, you know, now we're where we are, where you know me now. So, so tell me a little bit about that, Jeremy. I mean, it, you know, I mean, it, it's one thing to just, you know, say that, man, there, there's probably a lot of, you know, emotion, a lot of things that you've learned through, um, going through that. And I think, you know, again, this podcast is really designed to just help people understand mindset and shift and things to, I mean, cause you are super successful, right? And look at, you know, you, you had a health crisis to where it wiped you completely out. And, yeah. and then, you know, look at where you are today. And I think, you know, your journey, I think you need to share that. So wherever <laughs> you want to start, man, I know that's a vague question, but yeah, I, I think when we, when we talk about successful people, right. And then things and the wisdom and the things that we learn and, 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 you know, through our life lessons and what allows us to be where we're at, I think it's just, it's huge. So, you know, where were you at? Were you kind of on the rise? It, you know, you talked about you were doing things that most people weren't even aware of yet. Sound like you were super successful. And then all of a sudden you had this interruption, right? Yeah. So what was kind of going through your head, um, you know, as you got sick and, and as things kind of started to spiral out of control, what was some of the things that you were experiencing and thinking and, and how did you change that mindset? Yeah. So, you know, you, you touched on mindset and that's really critical for, for anything that we're doing, right? Because we've all seen two types of people, right? You've got the people who they can be handed everything and just think that the world is terrible and everything's stacked against them. And then you've got other people who can be handed absolutely nothing or be handed absolute shit. And somehow they'll find the treasure in that. So I, it's that mindset that makes all the difference because life is tough. There's never going to be a time when life is just going to be easy and, and everything's going to go your way. So it, it's critical to have that mindset. That's, that's the first and most important thing in any of this, right? Because we're going to go through hard times. Even if things go well, people are going to die. Business deals are going to go sideways. There's going to be things that are going to go wrong, no matter how well we plan and how well we prepare. So it's critical to have that mindset that you're going to overcome things. Um, so in my case, you know, I was doing great, had plenty of money in the bank, uh, clients left and right, everything was going perfect. And then I had this health crisis and it drug on and nobody knew what the hell it was. We couldn't figure it out. I was in the ER like three, four times a week sometimes. And, uh, you know, we were just kind of trying to figure out what the hell this was. And I was in this massive pain from head to toe. Hmm. And to put this in context, and I know a lot of my, my veteran friends understand the context of long-term chronic pain, right? That wears on you in ways that right. the average person can't imagine, both emotionally and physically, right? Because from purely from a physical perspective, it just, it hurts. 
it, it wears you down. It, it, it affects your neurotransmitters even, so which then affects your emotions, right? Long-term pain uh, burns off your dopamine, which has profound effect on your mood and your emotional stability. Um, so I was in this pain from basically head to toe, from skin down to bone. And it was just a level of pain that I had never experienced. And I have a ridiculously high tolerance for pain, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to put this in context, uh, I, so I once took a tattoo off with a drum sander. All right. So when I say <laughs> I have a high tolerance for pain, you do. Right, so we have to frame this properly first. So I'm just going, I'm going through this massive pain and, um, you know, I would go into the doctors and they would be like, oh, well, I think you're having a panic attack here. Take this antidepressants. That's not the answer. That's not, that's not the solution. That's not what this is. And so I went through just countless doctors and pretty much lost all faith in the medical system at, at that point. Mm. Um, but, you know, kind of explored outside the traditional medicine, got into a lot of the hippie, hippie, woo woo stuff. Um, went through a lot of work with mindset. And around that time, I had gotten to a point where because of this pain, it was just such a massive level of pain. And it was over an extended period of time. I mean, it, this drug on, I mean, I'm st we're still dealing with this today, but at this point or early in the process, you know, we were a few months in with a level of pain that was just astronomical. And I got to a point where while I wasn't thinking about taking my life, I got to the point where I understood how people make that decision. Wow. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a military guy. I, I, I'm big into guns. I'm big into all that, that whole side of the world. So there were guns all over my house and I'd be walking around and, you know, there's guns on a shelf here and there's guns on a shelf here and they're just everywhere. And the thought starts to creep in. It's like, oh, well, like, not that I want to do that, but like, that's, that's an easy way to end this. And the, the thought started to creep into my mind more often than I was comfortable with. And about that same time, a Marine that I served with, who was without question, one of the toughest people I've ever met, did end up taking his life. And for me, that was like a huge, just absolute eye-opening moment. Um, because, you know, up to that point, I'd always thought that, well, if you do that, it's, it's just, you're weak. You're just looking for an easy way out. But I, I was at a point where now I understood how people get to that point. Um, so what I did from there was I started using my situation to then reach out and, and help and support people who were going through that same kind of thing. And part of it was for myself, you know, I would be on social media and I'm posting these motivational, inspirational type of things. And I'm trying to, you know, keep myself uplifted, but at the same time doing the same for others. And I didn't think too much about it beyond surface level. But over time, people started reaching out to me and they're like, you know, like you have no idea how much, you know, how much your post impacted me. And I was going through this really tough thing and I saw this and, and it like really lifted me up. And so then I just doubled down on it. And I started, um, you know, I started reaching out to veterans. I started, basically my phone number would get passed around to anyone who was struggling. Pretty much anyone in my circle knows that they can give out my cell phone to any veteran who's struggling. And I've, you know, I've then used this as, as a, a platform to, you know, help other veterans who are struggling. You know, kind of counsel them and you know there was a particular case where a, a guy I went to high school with reached out to me one day and he's like look man I got this guy on my team one of my employees and he's you know he's falling apart uh, the kid had just come back from Iraq um, he had some really rough experiences that he just wasn't comfortable talking with anyone about mm -hmm. and um, he's like look do you mind if I put him in touch with you I was like yeah absolutely so ended up talking to this kid uh, he called me while my wife and I were out of town somewhere and I'm standing outside, we're uh, visiting uh, one of her old high school friends. So I went out back and I'm talking to this kid for like four hours. And we got off the phone, seemed like he was in a good place. We got off the phone. Um, my phone goes into do not disturb at a certain time in the evening, right? Because mm -hmm. with the health stuff that I'm still trying to fix, right. I have to get a certain amount of sleep. So phone basically just shuts down. So he called me that night after our call and I didn't initially hear it, but I saw the voicemail pop up and I just still happened to be up. So I, I listened to it and he's like, man, he's like, and the kid's just like absolute sobbing, bawling. And he's like, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. Like I've, I've talked to all these 
counselors at the VA and I've done all this and I've gone to all these places and like nobody fucking got it. Nobody got me. Nobody knew. And like this conversation, like I feel like things are a thousand times better when nobody else could do anything. And so like that was kind of what I started really pouring myself into. Um, so I, I looked at this whole thing that had happened to me and as shitty as it was, you know, I'm, I'm in pain. I've got all these crazy symptoms going on. I've got all this stuff that's just making my life such a challenge, but I found the silver lining in that. And that was, it gave me an understanding that I didn't have before. And it helped me to go and help other vets. And, you know, from the beginning of this to now, I, I don't really have like an ac account. I haven't really kept a, a tally or anything, but I know that there's several people that as a result of this, I've actually pulled back from, you know, they were, they, several of them had told me that they were going to kill themselves. Yeah. And so as a result of this, I was able to pull several people back from that. Um, and I've probably worked with hundreds of different veterans um, in this capacity. It's not an official thing. It's just, here's my phone yeah. number. Let's talk. Um, and had this situation not happened to me, I wouldn't have had that understanding and I would not have been able to do that. So, you know, from a mindset perspective, it's really important to find the value in the shitty things that happen to us because no matter how bad a situation is, there's always some good to come out of it. And I think it's really important to look at things from that perspective. Well, and you, you know, it, you made a good point there, right? Because anytime something happens, there's always a, there's always a, a choice of an outcome. There's a positive or a negative outcome. And again, it, it's so easy to say this, right? But when you're in it, and I mean, I can't even imagine, you know, the pain, the things that you're going through and to, you know, um, experience that and, and try to choose that. Now, as you were, you know, reaching out and having these conversations with, with your fellow veterans and, and your Marines, did that pain sub, what subside as you were, but it was, it was, it just did it from a, I guess, a mentality standpoint, just kept you going. Right. Yeah. The pain, the pain is still, it's not quite, I mean, it, there, it goes up and down, right? It, it's not right. a steady level, but um, it, it's maybe, you know, whereas in the beginning it was like a 10 on my scale. Um, you know, nowadays it probably fluctuates between a, a five to an eight um, on my scale, which is, you know, well beyond a normal person's scale. So it's still there. It's still pretty consistent. I just, I've, I guess, become tougher, more disciplined, to keep doing what I have to do, regardless of how I feel. Um, and, and I think ultimately that's, that's what we need to look at from our own lives is we don't have to feel a certain way to do what we need to do. We just have to do what we need to do. Right. Um, and, and that's something that we did in the military. I mean, I, 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 I know most people haven't done some of the things that we've done. You know, you go put on 100, 100 to 150 pounds of gear and go walk up a mountain really fast for, you know, six hours. You don't feel good doing that, but you're doing it for a purpose. So you're going to push through and do it. And I think a lot of people, they don't have that discipline. They, they think about, well, you know, I'll do this when I'm inspired or I'll do it when I'm motivated. And frankly, that's all bullshit, right? The motivation, that's, that's a made up thing, right? You may be excited about a thing, but what's going to drive you is the discipline because most of the time when we're doing what we're doing, we don't feel like we're making a tremendous amount of progress. You know, we're out here and we're doing the little things that we're doing. Let's say, you know, you're you're writing articles that, that demonstrate your expertise while sharing knowledge with the world or you're going and networking with people or you're getting on stage and speaking and, and sharing your wisdom with people, whatever, whatever the things you're doing. It's all those little things in the moment don't feel like much, but over the totality of your career or even just, you know, over the course of a month, over the course of a year, that stuff adds up in ways that people don't realize and the people who are disciplined enough to do that, regardless of how they feel, are always going to slingshot well past the people who are doing things when they're motivated or inspired. You know, and again, it, it's the time and the grind, right? It, it, yeah. Nothing happens overnight. And I think a lot of us, you know, we can look at successful people and it seems like everything went their way. And the reality is, is we don't know the, the shit that they went through to get there. Right. right? I mean, because I look at you and, and, you know, we touched on, touched on this real briefly, but I mean, you have a very, very successful company. Um, and, and the things that you do for your, your people that you partner with and all these things, I mean, for our listeners, I mean, Jeremy is a stud and the, his Spartan media and the company, I mean, he does some phenomenal work and, you know, as you were, I guess the question is, is as you know, you, you go through this pain, you, 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 like you said, you just, everything was wiped out. 
you start reaching out to veterans and start helping them with their issues that is kind of helping you get along. What things then transpired for you from a financial standpoint, from a, a business standpoint, things that as you were doing that, that you started to think about to try to get to where you are today? Yeah, so it was an interesting journey. Um, you know, up to that point, I'd always kind of relied on myself. I, I didn't really tap into relationships. I mean, I had relationships, but I didn't lean on them. I didn't ask people to help in various ways. I just kind of wanted to try and do everything myself just for a variety of reasons. But when I got back at it, that wasn't, that wasn't a possibility, right? Like in the past, I was able to outwork everyone. I was able to do things, um, just put in monumental effort. And on the other side of this health crisis, like my body was spent. I had no energy. I would be, there was times when I'd be sitting, I was working from home and I would be sitting on the couch and writing an article and then just fall asleep. Like I was some 70 year old man. Um, so I got to a point where I had to rely on others and, you know, it was very uncomfortable at first. It definitely, it took some getting used to, cause that just wasn't who I was like in the military, of course, like we relied on each other. That's a very different scenario, but that's a different kind of people. Right. So right. for me doing this out in the civilian world was very different, but a few friends stepped up and kind of helped me out with some connections. Um, from there, I ended up getting a column in a couple of prominent publications. Um, and then I leveraged that started working up into some other publications, started sharing my knowledge, uh, almost obsessively on social media and in articles and in videos and just all over the place. Um, and that just kind of snowballed. And then I started figuring out how to use that and how to leverage that to work my way up and, you know, started getting featured in major publications like entrepreneur and Forbes and fortune, things like that. And then as I started doing this, I realized I didn't realize it at the time, which kind of ties back into what we talked about, right? It's the same way that, you know, it's all these little steps that you're taking um, and you don't really see it until you step back and take a look at it from, from the whole. Um, it was the same way with this, right? Like I was doing all these things, but I didn't realize that at the same time I was developing a certain process for basically turning, turning you or turning someone into an authority in their industry. Um, and, and that's kind of something we've been pivoting to lately is, is basically offering that as a service. But it was that whole, that journey, it was, it was, for me, it was a game changer because I came in from, you know, less than zero at that point, right? Because we had right. burned through, the company basically died. I wasn't working. I had to start over um, for, for like the first two years of this health crisis, I wasn't doing anything. So when I started working again, I had no references. I had no work to refer to. I had no case studies. I was like so far behind everything. So I was basically starting from zero, but then at the same time, we had burned through all of our savings. We had spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on medical treatments and we had great insurance, but this was what was not covered by the insurance. Right. So um, basically I had dug myself into a hole from a debt perspective. I was starting over from zero from a business perspective and I was just like trying everything I could grab to jump back on top quickly. And, you know, that was how I developed this process, um, which, you know, you've seen firsthand with some of the people that we know in our circles together. Mm -hmm. So tell me about, you know, you, you made a comment about, and you didn't really necessarily say the word, but I'm going to say the word and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, the delegation, right? Like you said, you didn't really rely on people or tr not, not trust, but it was hard for you to give up control. Right. Because, and I get that. Right. Yeah. But as, as your, your body is just not able to outwork or just the long hours that maybe you'd be able to grind out before. Mm -hmm. So what was the process or, or did anything like one thing really help? Or was it just more of a, I need to delegate. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to do this. Or was there something, some coaching or some things that someone, you know, spoke to you in a way that, you know what, I, this is the way that I need to, to do this with the company from a, from a process and technology standpoint. Yeah, it wasn't so much delegation. It was more a matter of the process itself that I used. Um, part of the problem was in the past, like I've had, you know, prior to the health crisis, I had, I had employees, they were doing things. But in this case, what I'm talking about is more from the perspective of, I had a problem asking people to do things for me. So 
um, not from an employee employer relationship, but from a, you know, industry peers or friends or things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It does. So when I, you know, I had been writing at the time on my own blog and um, sharing content on social media, sharing content in various, through various platforms, but nothing really large and authoritative. Um, so I had mentioned to a friend wanting to write for a particular publication. He happened to know the uh, executive editor and he's like, well, let me take care of that for you. And I was like, no, 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 I'll, I'll just like, I'll wait for them to recognize it. And he's like, no, no, we're just gonna make this introduction and we'll, uh, we'll get this ball rolling. And I was like, all right, well, I felt really fucking uncomfortable and he did it and you know ended up getting a column there they loved my writing i uh, started writing there very regularly still right there today and um ended up becoming good friends with the with the editor as well and then that kind of segued off into other publications um within my industry and then from there i started reaching out to some other places um I reached out to there was there was one case where i did it all wrong uh, I found a guy who wrote for Forbes and I was, I was thinking, well, Hey, I want to write for Forbes. That'd be a great place to be writing. Uh, so I reached out to him cause he had actually written an article on Forbes about how to be published in Forbes. I said, well, who's better to ask than this guy. Right. So I reached out to him and I was like, Hey, look, um, you know, I see you got this article. So you got a column here. Would you introduce me to the editor? I'd like to get a column here. No, it was all about me. Yeah. It was like, Hey, can you do this for me? Like, I don't know who the hell you are. You don't know who the hell I am. Um, like I haven't done anything for you. Here's my ask. And he's like, no, no, I can't do that. That's not really how this works. But he says, but if you want, I'm starting this group where we kind of talk about these kind of things. You're welcome to come in here. Um, I ended up joining that group. It was a, it was just a free group. Um, when I first came in there, it was just a handful of people today. It's thousands and thousands of people, but from there, I built some really strong relationships with some other people who are now great friends of mine, but also valuable business assets. And I just kind of leveraged that and, and continued to work my way up the path. But along the way, you know, I continued that general mindset where like I'm always sharing, I'm always trying to help and, and give back in some way. And that was a key factor in why my approach generally was successful, even though from time to time, I kind of had some missteps, like, you know, the asking the guy that I had never met to hook me up with a Forbes column, basically. Um, so, you know, it, a lot of it comes down to really adding value at every opportunity that you can, rather than just trying to take, right? Relationships are always a, you know, I kind of look at it like a bank. People are either going to be making deposits or withdrawals. And the reality, unfortunately, is most people are making withdrawals from most relationships. Very few people are consistently making deposits to uh, you know most of the people within their networks, and that's why the people that do that get so much further ahead. Tell me about um, deposits and the relationships and, and some of the things that you're doing um, on a big scale with with some of the things that you're doing on a day to day to to continue networking and doing those things. What 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 have you found to be really successful in, in your business and working with people? Yeah, so I've got certain things that I do. Um, w one thing that I do, which what I call is, um, uh, you've probably heard the, the phrase, finding the needle in the haystack. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at it from a different perspective. Uh, if I meet somebody, I do what's called finding the haystack. So rather than trying to find the one little thing, I think of all the people I know in my network that might be useful for them and that they might be useful for. And then I'll pretty much just start introducing those people back and forth. I'm not looking for anything. I'm not expecting anything. It's just, hey, I know this person has this need and I know this person can solve that need and basically just bring them together. Um, you know, I, I'm not expecting anything. It just, it takes a few minutes of my time, but it helps these people in ways that, you know, they might not be able to accomplish on their own. Uh, so that's one of the things I do. And I've seen that, like, you know, being friends on Facebook, I mean, you just, it, it's natural for you, right? Yeah. It just, I just see like people make comments and all of a sudden Jeremy's like, Hey, I know so-and-so you should guys connect, connect. Right. And it's just, it, I mean, it's true. I see it all the time. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, 
beyond that, the other thing I like to do is like, as I stumble across, because I come across all kinds of opportunities, um, you know, not just directly related to what I do, which I do. So here's, here's an example. Actually, um, I, I met a lady recently who writes for a particular publication, um, reached out to her, uh, pitched a story for a mutual friend of ours, your, yours and mine. And, you know, she loved it. It was great. Later on, uh, the following evening, I happened to stumble across a PR opportunity for something unrelated, nothing I was involved with, nothing related to any of my clients, but it was something she had written about in the past. So I went and I grabbed that opportunity, popped over to LinkedIn and shared it with her. And I was like, hey, I know you've written about this in the past. Um, maybe you have some friends or know somebody that, that might be a good fit for this. Just wanted to share it with you. And she's like, oh my God, like, this is amazing. Like nobody does this kind of thing. And to me, that's a little mind blowing. It's like, it took me literally, you know, 30 seconds to do this. And it could have provided tremendous value to multiple people. So the way I look at it, like if we're all doing this, and I mean, it's never going to get to that point, but if right. we're all doing this, if we're all looking for ways to add value to the world, even where it doesn't necessarily benefit us directly, I think the world would be in a drastically different place and it would be far more positive. You know, and, and I talk a lot about helping people understand that they're their greatest asset. And I think that, you know, if people can really recognize that, right, the value that they can not only bring to the world, but other people, because I think we just devalue ourselves so often, yeah. right? And we don't look at ourselves as that we're, we are our greatest asset. And if we can change that mindset to believe that, and then to empower other people, it is a snowball effect. Right? It really is. Yeah. The key is though, we have to, and this is a little bit of a double-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. We have to not be transactional. It's not like, hey, I did this for you. What are you going to do for me? Yeah. Quid but pro this, quo. What's that? Quid pro quo. We don't need that, right? It's right. Like right. It's got to be genuine. Right. Leave the quid pro quo for the politicians. <laughs> but, but at the same time, we do need to occasionally take stock of who is adding and who is detracting from from the relationships that we're in, right? Like it yeah. doesn't have to be a, a direct one for one, but if somebody's consistently coming in and taking and, and never contributing, not just to you, but to, to somebody, right? Um, and we all know people like that. Um, you know, those are the people that we wanna kind of cut out of our lives. And maybe, who knows, if we do this, if enough of us do this, maybe the shitty people who are just taking will, will kind of open up their eyes and, and be like, oh, hey, maybe I should, you know, be a little bit more of a giver. Mm -hmm. So tell me, you know, for the one thing, if, if you look back through your journey and, and the things that you've experienced, what would be, you know, for the listeners, and it might be hard to narrow it down, but what would be the one key ingredient, the one most important thing that's helped you get to where you are today? I would say, you know, grit and resiliency. We're all going to go through shitty things. Hopefully most people don't go through some of the things that I've gone through, but we all are going to face adversity in some way. You know, I think most of the people in our circle have probably had some devastating financial losses or you know a, a very significant business deal goes sideways so we're all going to face some kind of adversity in some way um and it's it's having the mindset to not only overcome that but also find the positives in it uh that is going to really be the determining factor because most people when they face something challenging it's oh woe is me this is terrible this always happens to me I'm just going to sit here and feel sorry for myself and maybe someone will save me. And the reality is no one's coming to save you. You know, we've got to, we've got to save ourselves, um, you know, look out for each other as well, but you know, right. ultimately it's going to come down to us. There's a great book. You ever, uh, you ever heard of David Goggins? No. Oh my God. All right. So you have to get this book, do the yeah. audio version of it. It's him and, and some other guy does the actual reading for most of it. But um, he's this guy, like, I listened to the book and literally like the first 20 seconds in, I'm like, oh my God, like, this is my people right here. I forget the exact quote, but he, he kind of goes through this, this string of things that like all these things don't matter. And he's like, the sooner you realize life is going to fuck you up, the sooner <laughs> that you can start preparing for it. And it's like, within 20 seconds, I was like, oh my God, like this, this guy is like in my head. Um, What's but the title he is, of the book? You remember uh, the title of the book is can't hurt me. Okay. Uh, the guy's a former Navy seal, absolute beast. Like anytime that 
I've done some pretty crazy things and I've, I've overcome a lot of adversity, but Jesus, I look at this guy and he has done a hundred times that. I mean, he went through, you probably know a little bit about the military. You, you do you know what hell yeah, week I, is? I have, I, yeah, I have some, uh, actually, uh, a cousin who was a Navy SEAL and I have a number okay. of friends who are Navy SEALs. So I'm, yeah. Okay. And my, and my father served for, uh, throughout the international garden. So yeah, I'm familiar with him. Yep. You bet. Okay. So this guy went through hell week three yep. times. Three times. Three separate times, completely he, through. And yeah, it's so much fun. He had to do it three more he had to do it three <laughs> times, right? Right. And the third time he went through, he actually did it on broken legs. Um, uh, he went through all kinds of other stuff. He started going into these like extreme endurance races, um, you know, like 100 plus miles. Uh, there was one where he ran and he didn't really prepare for it. So he went and he ran this 100 plus mile race and, you know, got back to the finish and his wife and his mother, you know, drove him back to the house. And as he's getting to the bathtub, he noticed that uh, he starts basically, um, rather than urine coming out, it's like this clumpy, bloody kind of stuff. And, you know, they had a, a, an ER doc that his mother knew on standby, you know, leading up to this. So, sure. I mean, when you do something like that, you have to have yeah. kind of medical people on board. And uh, he's like, look, what's going on is his kidneys are actually shutting down. You need to get him to the emergency room right now. So they called the uh, ambulance and he's like, no, 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 don't call the ambulance. Now, meanwhile, he's balled up next to the bathtub. He's like, don't call the ambulance. Let's just drag me to the car. I don't want them to give me, because if the ambulance comes, they're going to give me pain meds. And I don't want to take anything away from this experience. I want to experience this in its totality. Right. So it's a totally different approach, a totally different mindset to, to overcoming stuff. Like this guy is just an absolute beast. Um, so I, that, that's a book that I definitely recommend, whether you're going through something challenging or not, um, it'll kind of reframe your mind on what you're actually capable of and what you can overcome. Um, you know, it was, it, it's something that as I'm still going through a lot of this health stuff, as we're trying to figure this out, um, that's one of the books that I, I re-listen to uh, pretty regularly. So what would be the one thing from a business perspective that you've learned that you wouldn't do again? That I wouldn't do again? Yeah. I wouldn't say that there's a thing I wouldn't do. What I would say is it's really important. It's critical to trust our gut, right? A lot of times we'll, we'll meet somebody and think, oh, hey, this person's awesome. Like, look at, you know, put them up on a pedestal. This person's accomplished all these huge things. They want to partner with me in some way, whatever, and basically just like hand everything over. And, you know, then you realize, well, this person's actually not what I thought they were. Um, they're, they're a little shady or they're, they're not really at the level they said they were or whatever. Um, we get that gut feel for a reason. Humans have evolved to really like spot danger. Uh, and, and where we are now, we've got fairly safe lives. Nobody's trying to kill most of us most of the time, right? Like, you know, with the exception of, you know, those of us who are like in the military or, or a firefighter or a cop or right. something where you're actually in a job where people are trying to kill you, most of us aren't in real danger most of the time. So what happens is we start to dismiss this innate instinct that we have to kind of identify danger. And it's not necessarily danger from a death perspective, but danger at this point in, in the relatively safe world we live in, danger from the perspective of we're going to get screwed somehow, or we're going to get ripped off, or you know something's going to go wrong. When you get that gut feel, it's there for a reason. It's not because you're being paranoid most of the time. Interesting. Yeah. And I suppose, in, in, and especially in in working with people, right? Like we, we want to we want to like zone oh, that's not the way they are right because like you said we put this person up on a pedestal or like we feel like there's that that trust that respect and there's no way they would be that way but yet somehow we have to you know discern through that and you know we're gonna we're gonna make i guess good calls and bad calls but i think to your point it's easy to second guess your gut a lot of times you know yeah yeah and you know in most of the most of the mistakes i've made in business it's come down to me having not trusted my gut yeah, that's amazing. So Jeremy, if the people want to get hold of you and, and you know, with, with Spartan Media, how can someone connect with you on your, some of your social media platforms or just how can they get in contact with you? And, and even for the veterans, right? Yeah. And story about that. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm not a hard guy to find. Obviously, with, with what I do, you can find me pretty much anywhere. I'm on pretty much every social network. If you just Google my name, uh, my website will come up, various columns that I write for will come up, social profiles, et cetera. Um, 
just find me somewhere and reach out to me. I'm easy to find. And your name and the company name again is a uh, company named Spartan media. And as far as the spelling of my last name, since most people, uh, can't uh, spell it or pronounce it right. It's K-N-A-U-F-F. -F. So Jeremy Knopf, everybody, right? Yes. Well, Jeremy, I really appreciate you being on the uh, on the show today. And again, thanks for you know sharing your story. And it's my pleasure. Um, man, you've had a lot of impact on a lot of people. So thank you, man. Keep doing keep doing those awesome things. And you know, um, I appreciate you, man. And just thanks for taking some time today. So really, really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.